Hi, my name's Jenny Estes, and I'm here in Bakersfield, California. I've got a couple of really fun recipes I'm going to share with you today. We're going to be using millet and quinoa, two alternative grains. Now, they're called alternative grains, but they're actually seeds. They are not in the grain family. So, they're very nutritious, full of vitamins and minerals, and the quinoa is list listed as a superfood. It has, it's full of antioxidants, phytonutrients, and it even helps lower blood sugar, which is great if you're diabetic like I am. So to start with, we're going to make millet tortillas. Now you may be asking, why are we starting with the grain and not flour? That's because millet is, millet flour goes rancid very quickly. So I don't ever buy millet flour, I grind my own. Now I'm gonna use a coffee grinder. This is actually my husband's reject coffee grinder. He didn't, he used it for many years and it works great for grinding seeds and nuts. And you can make fresh flour. Out of almost anything. Millet is also a wonderful alternative. Now you can see the consistency here. If you stir it around a little bit, there's, there's still some that haven't been ground yet. So I'm gonna grind it a little more. Now if I was making polenta or cornbread with millet, millet is an excellent substitute for corn because I have a corn allergy and so I use millet in any recipe for corn. So if I was going to make polenta or cornmeal mush or um, cornbread, I would use it more like this consistency. But let's grind it a little finer for the tortillas. You can also grind, you don't have to use a coffee grinder. You can also use any blender, a Vitamix works great, or any regular blender. If you just use about a, a quarter to a third of a cup of millet at a time, you grind it to, you see that's a better consistency. Here we have two cups of millet flour, freshly ground, and we have two cups of water that has just reached a boil. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dump, sprinkle the millet into the water, but do not stir. Resist the temptation to stir. I know it's gonna drive you crazy, but what happens is then we want it to lower the heat to just a simmer and we're going to let it sit like this without touching it for two minutes. It's been two minutes so now what we're going to do is turn off the heat and I'm going to stir as quickly as possible and try and get the millet and the water mixed in really well. We don't want any dry spots. Now what's going to happen, because that's hot, the millet then flour is going to then continue to absorb the liquid and cook a little bit. So once we're sure that all the flour and the water are incorporated together, looks pretty good. All right, then we're going to transfer it to a bowl. Let it sit and cool for about 10 minutes. It's been about 10 minutes, and I've got a nice, warm, almost Play-Doh-like consistent glob here. So what we want to do is we want to take off about the size of a golf ball. And actually, I'm going to move it here. It's very gel almost gelatinous. It sticks together. And I'm going to make little golf ball-sized tortillas out of this. And now, you can either use a tortilla press, like I have here, or you can use a rolling pin and um, saran wrap, or I'm going to show you how to use a Ziploc bag to roll these out. But if you're going to make tortillas frequently, I would highly suggest the tortilla press doesn't cost very much. I've had this for 25 years, um, and it's a little workhorse. So, after we make, roll the 
the balls. The important thing is you don't want the dough to dry out too much. So once we've got the balls made, we are going to cover the bowl. So I have my handy Pyrex bowl that also has, you know, some of these are going to be smaller than others, but that's all right. Um, I have my handy Pyrex bowl that has a lid so I can seal it. So I'm going to take one ball out to start with. Also, I have had my griddle or my pan, my um, non-stick griddle heating for a while. You want to have it on, I have it on a um, low medium temperature and I've been heating it up because you want it evenly heated. Then your tortillas will um, cook evenly, brown evenly. So what we've done here is you take a quart size Ziploc bag and you cut it around the edges and it makes just a wonderful, perfect size for the tortilla press to press your, make your tortillas in. Now I used to use saran wrap, but oh my gosh, that stuff would, you can only make a couple of them and it would squish. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So we're gonna take that and put it right on the grill. No oil needed. And keep them covered while we pull them out. I try to get two on a time, as long as I don't make them too big. That works. You can see how handy the tortilla press is, though. It makes instant, beautiful little millet tortillas that you can use in any recipe for corn tortillas. So we're going to let those cook a little bit. Okay, these have been cooking for a few minutes, and look, they're nicely brown. We're going to flip them and cook them uh, till they're about the same on that, or even just a little bit more. Now, the other side is done. Let's remove them from the griddle, and I'm putting them on paper towels, not because there's any fat to be drained off, but the, um, the heat from the tortillas, if you put them on a plate, remove them to a plate, will create condensation and water. And so the paper towel is just there to absorb the slight condensation. And we're going to let these cool, and I'm going to cook the rest of them. Six of them. You get about 12 to 13 tortillas out of a, a two cups water and two cups millet. So these are real flexible little guys. You can use them um, as a, a sand, to hold sandwich uh, goodies on. You can put any kind of spread, hummus, any kind of pate. What, um, one of my favorite things to do is Trader Joe's has these Cuban style black beans that are completely fat free and they're just spiced perfectly to sprinkle a few on here with a little bit of avocado and some veggies, maybe um, chopped tomatoes, onions. Um, another alternative is the fat free spicy black bean dip from Trader Joe's. Again, there's, it's already seasoned or you can make your own refried beans. The other option is, um, my favorite way of eating them is just uh, to pull them out of the freezer because what I do is I will take these when they're cool and take a quart size freezer bag and they fit really well in the bag and you can freeze them for up to three months if they last that long. Try and get all the air out. Now these are still a little warm, but get as much of the air out as possible. And they very easily, once frozen, you can just pop one off. I throw it in the uh, toaster oven and then pull it out and put just a little mashed avocado on it and maybe a little lemon juice. Oh, or chopped garlic. Oh my goodness. They are so good and so flexible. They go great with soups, salads, almost anything. So they're a great addition to your diet and I hope you get adventurous and want to make these soon. So that's it for the millet tortillas. I've made many kinds of tortillas over the years. I have a lot of food allergies and, have, and I'm also gluten intolerant. So I've cooked with a lot of uh, rice flours and alternative grains. And I have to tell you, these are the easiest tortillas to make. They are the most flexible and sturdy of all the alternative flours. So have fun experimenting on your own. I'm just getting ready to make the quinoa salad, and the last ingredient is fresh mint, which I went out and picked in my garden this morning. And this is the, this is the
the most important ingredient in this salad because this is the flavor that really makes everything come together. Mint is probably the easiest herb to grow. You don't have to have a garden. It'll grow with flowers. It'll grow in any bed. And once it takes root, it's almost like a weed. Fresh mint is something that's really great to have and to be able to get um, as often as you can. In a pinch, I have actually used, so that's, um, that's about two tablespoons of fresh mint we're going to put in our salad. In a pinch, I've actually taken a peppermint tea bag and opened it up and sprinkled the whole tea bag, one or two, on there just to get the mint flavor for this salad. So what we have, I just sprinkled the mint into the quinoa. Now this quinoa was actually cooked last night, and so after it sat all night, it's nice and dry. You can, um, most quinoa recipes call for two cups of water to one cup quinoa. Now, you really want your quinoa dry for this salad, so I often will only use a cup and a half of water, and then let it, um, cook it for 15 minutes and let it sit for another five, and you want it to be really cool before you stir in the other ingredients for this salad. This is a salad that I developed 15 years ago, and it is my go-to potluck salad. Um, it, it has fresh fruit in it. I prefer to use peaches. These are also from my tree. I'm fortunate to have a beautiful peach tree. Um, so we have three peaches or nectarines or any kind of fruit. I've made it with oranges. I've made this salad with apricots, any kind of summer fruit or even apples. Then we're going to take these raisins have been um, soaked in hot water, really hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling for about 15 or 20 minutes. So we're going to sprinkle the raisins in. And then we have, oh, missed one. Then we have, um, chives and or green onions. Two green onions if they're store-bought. I use three because, again, these came out of my garden and they're a little thinner because you want that, that onion contrast to the fruit. Now, originally, this salad called for a quarter cup of oil but and a half a teaspoon of salt. Those are the two only changes I've made to this recipe in 15 years in order to make it E2 compliant. And you know what? I don't miss the salt or the oil at all. What we do use as a dressing is, this is three tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, and one and a half tablespoons of red wine vinegar. You always want to use fresh lemon juice. Don't use that real lemon. It, it's, it won't taste the same. A good thing to do with lemons is to buy them on sale and then juice them and freeze them in ice cube trays. Then you've always got some fresh lemon juice on hand. So we're just going to drizzle the lemon juice and the vinegar and toss it. And this salad is ready to go. It tastes like summer itself. And everyone, I take it to potlucks and they rave about it. It's a great way to introduce people to quinoa. So there you have it, the quinoa summer salad, the millet tortillas. I hope you feel adventurous and, and want to have some fun in your kitchen and try these recipes out for yourself.